1953, the Iranian Premier Mohammad Mossadegh was overthrown in a coup d'etat. The CIA and the British Special Intelligence Service's involvement in the coup was one of the intelligence agency's worst kept secrets, but even so it's taken them 60 years to release proper documents on it. Between them, the CIA and SIS came up with a plan which was approved by Kermit Roosevelt, the CIA's chief of the Near East and Africa Division, and Alan Dulles, the agency's director at the time. Now, there are a lot of reasons why the UK and US got into this, but these are the two main ones, and they're kind of familiar. Oil and commies. As with many Western invasions of countries in the Middle East, oil played a big part in the decision-making. Mohammad Mossadegh had nationalised Iran's oil industry in 1951, taking ownership from the Anglo-Iranian oil company, who later became BP. Britain reacted to this by starting a global boycott of Iranian oil, but then decided that overthrowing the government was a better course of action. In the new CIA documents, it actually says, by the end of 1952, it had become clear that the Mossadegh government in Iran was incapable of reaching an oil settlement with interested Western countries. Then it goes on to say this about the coup. Specifically, the aim was to bring a government which would reach an equitable oil settlement. Meanwhile, Mossadegh had been getting cosy with the Communist Party of Iran, and at the start of the Cold War, the Allies didn't want a major Middle Eastern power falling behind the Iron Curtain and siding with the Soviets. And this is what the CIA documents have to say about it. They say the Iranian government was implementing irresponsible policies based on emotion and had weakened the Shah. They then specifically say that the aim of the project was to replace the government with one which could govern Iran according to constructive policies. And by constructive policies, they mean, yeah, ones that we like, yeah? So once it was decided that getting rid of this radical lefty who didn't want to give away his oil was the best plan of action, and they just had to go through with it. They began a propaganda campaign with US politicians making it clear that Iran wouldn't be getting any economic aid from them. Then they planted articles in the American press, which would be reproduced in Iran. They influenced the clergy in Tehran, and they used the BBC's Persian service to advance pro-Western propaganda. They informed General Zahidi, the man that they'd chosen to be the next Prime Minister of the plan, and the Shah himself. They even went as far as to get the Shah's sister to influence him because he was known for indecision. He eventually agreed to it, signing a document that replaced Prime Minister Mohammad Mossadegh with General Zahidi. A move was made to arrest Mossadegh, but information was leaked and the arrest failed. The Shah fled to Baghdad, then Rome, and Zahidi went into CIA protection. But they'd planned for this. The Shah made several declarations from exile that Zahidi was the legal political leader, and the propaganda campaign continued to discredit Mossadegh. It all culminated on August the 19th, 1953, when CIA political action assets, as they're known, helped stir up pro-Shah and anti-Mossadegh demonstrations, making them look spontaneous. Then the Iranian military was sent in to back the protesters and eventually Zahidi came out of hiding and claimed the government. Mossadegh was arrested and the Shah returned home from Rome to popular support. That was that then, mission accomplished. Except that over the next 26 years, the Shah and his prime ministers went about repressing any political dissent, especially the communists in the National Front, and those associated with Mossadegh were rounded up, imprisoned or executed. Over the next few years, thousands of political activists were arrested. And Savak, the secret police who were trained by the US, systematically rounded up and tortured anyone who was suspected of being a political dissident, and they did it with brute force. That was until 1979, when all the frustrated anti-Shah and anti-American sentiment finally boiled over in the Islamic Revolution. Of course, most of you probably knew that the CIA were involved already, but now it's official. And there are details in the documents that are new to us and worth checking out, so we'll provide a link to them in the description and see you again soon. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.